Let's watch the story by Stephen Leto. The bicameral parliament resume its sittings tomorrow after a one-month recess, majorly triggered by the presidential repeat poll concluded last week. Assumption of business by the Senate and the National Assembly comes amid pending house business that must be resolved with no delay. For instance, in the National Assembly, top on its agenda is appointment of members to sit in the selection committee. The committee is in readiness for the voting of cabinet nominees should there be changes in the current cabinet as well as other executive appointments. Already Kiambu Town Member of Parliament Jude Njomo has presented a notice of motion to Parliament seeking to have the formation of the Constitution Implementation and Oversight Committee CIOC to audit the current constitution and give recommendations within 60 days. In the Senate, Speaker Kenneth Lusaka told Citizen TV it was all systems go and the Senate is bracing up for a busy period that will entail reviewing of several legislations relating to devolution, including reintroducing debate on a special kitty for senators in aid of their oversight work. That's why we're saying that, you know, we need, and I'm appealing to the Senate, that we need to come back to the House and, and start business. So those are some of the issues that we need to start talking about. For example, how do we empower the senators to be able to carry out their work? Actually, they need to empower the senators to be able to carry out their oversight work. It is, however, the opposition's failure to present names to take up leadership position in both houses that continues to stall the parliamentary business. Sources have intimated that NASA has requested the House speakers to allow them until 30th of November. Because as it is now, the lead of majority is shouldering everything. is like the one who is responding to, to all the petitions, the, um, the statements that come and, and, and all that. So I will be appealing to the leadership of uh, uh, NASA to be able to provide us with the leadership so that we are able to move. So that's going to be priority number one. Also pending in Parliament is filling vacant positions in the Parliamentary Service Commission. Stephen Leto, Citizen TV, Nairobi. Yes, Parliament resumes today, but NASA is still not ready. They're asking for more time until 30th of November. Uh, Chris Romalwa, 30th of November is too far away. That's a whole month uh, without uh, your list uh, of uh, parliamentary leadership. Uh, people to take up parliamentary <coughs> leadership positions. Uh, isn't that a form of a boycott? Uh, first and foremost, uh, when you talk of uh, uh, that period of uh, one month, it does not necessarily mean that you wait for that one month. Of course, currently, I've been uh, in the leadership of uh, parliament uh, at the time of code, and of course, uh, I have no doubt that even this time of NASA, as you can see, my name has been proposed. Uh, consultations are going on. And I think uh, we might be able to finalize this maybe even before that time. And uh, maybe reacting to uh, what Leto has reported, when we get back, I think the critical thing we have to do is the, uh, uh, to constitute the House Business Committee. I didn't see my lighting on that. And the House Business Committee is the committee that is in charge of operations of Parliament day to day. Why is that House Business Committee? And it must be comprised of uh, both sides of the House. So once the House Business Committee is in place, then from there, we'll come up with a selection mm. committee. Are you saying now that uh, uh, that boycott by NASA MPs, uh, when they were staying away from Parliament, that that is now over, that uh, uh, once the House reopens today, NASA MPs will be in there as well? Yeah, we're going to be in the, we are going to be in the House. And so uh, I want you to know The note, boycott is officially I, over. I, I want you to know that uh, why we boycotted was you know, the house was being inaugurated by uh, President Uhuru at that particular time. And uh, he was not recognized from our side when he was enjoying the temporary incumbency. That was the clear message that he wanted to let Kenyans know. And uh, as we speak right now, and we, we said the new president that will, 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 for, will form maybe the next government, he'll ha he has to go and uh, maybe inaugurate the house afresh. Okay? <laughs> so in this case, and you can see we still also have uh, the issues of uh, the battles in court. Because what we, our argument was, why are we rushing? Why don't you wait the president to be elected legally? After that has been done, then you can go and uh, uh, inaugurate parliament. Are you saying that if the Supreme Court uh, uh, declares that Uhuru was validly elected, you will expect President Uhuru Kenyatta to come back to parliament 
and it, inaugurate the house afresh? You, you know, that one is the Jubilee side. I'm talking about the ideal situation from the NASA side. That was our argument. We did not <coughs> recognize it particular, uh, that particular, we, di we didn't recognize it. And even up to now, so now the elections on 26 as NASA, we don't recognize it. That's why we've said it was a sham election, so what, and that's why we're advocating on what that basis, we need fresh elections. On what basis are you going back to parliament? Because none of that has been remedied. The mm -hmm. situation is still the same. You still do not uh, believe you that know, Kenyatta is uh, validly elected. You know, under Article 94 of the Constitution, uh, Parliament is there to discuss uh, any issue that is affecting the nation. And uh, I've also given a notice for, for motion of adjournment to discuss the sham jubilee elections that were held on 26th. So it's a forum that we are going to debate. It's a house of debate. So, and we are there to discuss any issue that affects this nation and see what resolution do you have it in place? Yeah, Brian Mutia, do you get the feeling that NASA is not really clear I think on what they, they, they are to do going forward? That's also another double form of double speak coming from Mashmiwa, Chris. Uh, because when uh, you listen to him, you have already, he has already alluded to the fact that initially they boycotted even uh, the participation and also bringing members uh, in the House Business Committee to form that uh, uh, important quorum. And the reason he has given is that uh, they, they were never recognizing the president as elect or duly or legally uh, speaking uh, elect. And then now I'm asking what changed because the same same president is of, is elect and still we are having matters pending at the courts. So the, the 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 situation never changed from what it was up to now, and the same same president who inaugurated the, the, that house is the same same president who is actually sitting right now as we are talking as president elect, and therefore nothing much changed. But again, uh, if uh, Chris uh, Chris is actually honest enough, he has to tell us why. If he's actually talking about a boycott, why he also went ahead and they drew some salaries from the same same exchequer from a government that they are also saying that is not legit and again now they are also going there to boycott for another 30 days as he, as he, as he has alluded and uh, at the same time I expect also to draw the same salary from the same same illegitimate uh, you know house uh, convened business uh, committee which is also going to ensure that it comes into formation but again you have to also beg ask this big question if NASA feels that the whole process of even putting those leaders into perspective or in the position that they, they occupy was or did not go down well. Why didn't the NASA fraternity sit down and uh, declare the whole process a, sh a sham as they are talking? Because the same same transmission mechanisms that were used during the presidential uh, election are the same same, you know, uh, mechanism that were used to transmit the elections mm -hmm. of the same sitting members of parliament, senate, and even governors. I think this that's why I'm saying yes. there's a lot no, of no, that. No, no. And before you respond, let's uh, let's ask no, no, Steve Bikonyo, because I'm in, sure, I'm le, 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 Let me no, let me I'm give sure a asked, point of order. You I'm know, sure he'll ask some more questions. <laughs> yeah. No, no. What, what you do? Respond. What Steve? you do? Maybe for yeah, clarity Steve, before he comes just, in. Uh, no, just allow me. allow me. I think one of the problems or challenges I have with the position that NASA takes is that there seems to be. Uh, shape-shifting, if you will. You will say one thing today and then come back with something completely different. First of all, uh, the people who elected you uh, expected you to be in Parliament, participating and engaging in passing these laws and so on. Majority or, or, or minority notwithstanding, <coughs> it is important to register your position in Parliament on any given matter. We have seen NASA in the last period walking out of Parliament. Uh, we are seeing now NASA going to the streets instead of going to Parliament where the laws uh, can be enacted and passed. Uh, I think that is, that is truly a disservice uh, to the people of Kenya or to the people that ha have uh, elected you. I do not see any other way that we can move the country forward uh, other than going through Parliament and discussing and registering as Honorable Wamalwa, this is my position on this matter. At least all of us as Kenyans will see where that position is and where you stand on these matters. Mm -hmm. So I think it's critical for, for NASA to go back to Parliament as you do everything else that you're doing so that you can participate because uh, clearly uh, laws will be passed whether you're there or not. Register your position so that we as Kenyans can see where you are in these matters. Yes, uh, Chris O'Malley, when I as, you I, respond, I, I, as you respond I to, to that, as you respond to that, there seems to be a lot of uh, lack of clarity 
with regard to what happens next for NASA. Will the MPs go back to Parliament? Will they boycott uh, Parliament as well? Uh, does it mean that if you go back to the House, then you've accepted uh, the legitimacy of uh, Uru president? Kenyatta's presidency? Does it mean you're waiting for the Supreme Court to actually make a judgment, yet you say you're not even interested <coughs> in that? That's just what you believe. What exactly? I want, you, I, want you to, I want you to listen clearly, particularly Mutia here, mm. so that we don't bring the confusion. <laughs> Parliament is an independent body in terms of the three arms of government. And uh, once a parliamentarian, you've been uh, elected, uh, you've been given a certificate and you're sworn in, you're in Parliament. Mm -hmm. So as NASA, and I want you to listen clearly because you, you seem not to understand what I say. <laughs> in this case, when we said we boycotted, you need to understand that the there's order of business in Parliament. In that particular time, our boycott, the President inaugurated the House, and we say it was premature, because at that particular time, the, 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 the Supreme Court determination had not, been, had not been done. They went ahead to amend the laws. First, when the President, uh, for, for the benefit of Mutie, when the President uh, inaugurates Parliament, he gives his speech. Then the following business, you discuss the presidential speech. So, it was not business for us to go and debate on the presidential speech, and yet you were not there. So when you talk of boycott, you need to understand, or you, you seek clarification. Are we saying we're not coming? When you go there, you see members <coughs> have been coming, and we've been participating in some kind of business which has not skewed on the Jubilee side. We've been very keen. So really, parliament is not just legislate. It also provides a aspects of, uh, of oversight, for instance. I've just indicated that I've given a notice of motion to, of motion of adjournment to discuss the sham elections of, that the Jubilee had on 26th. So that means I can only do that when it comes to Parliament. There are some business we boycott that which we, in our own interpretation, we say it's not legitimate. For instance, the amendment law of the Elections Act. We boycotted that because we said <coughs> it is wrong for you to change the, the rules of the game and you are midway. Mm -hmm. You've seen even the international bodies that did that. Maybe he needs to come to let Parliament let, to understand no, no, no. more about let, standing let me just, let me just so uh, put in case, perspective. Just a second. Just let a second no, no, before no, no, you uh, depart from that statement. You have already said, talked about the amendment uh, laws that we are done. What role do you do as members of the opposition to ensure that they do not see the light of the day? Did you actively participate in the House proceedings? Did you do anything to okay, ensure... Let me explain wait a minute. Other than the boycotting, it's not about a matter of understanding because the, you say the parliament has its role and the members of opposition are members of that uh, uh, biz, uh, house. So therefore, if your role is to ensure that you put checks and balances into the government of the day, at the floor of the, of the house, what did you do to ensure no, that the explain. laws do not see the let light me, of the day? Explain. Did you actively participate? You, you know, parliamentary business uh, is carried through the house parliamentary committees. And when these elections uh, amendment law came in, Naturally, it's supposed to go to the Committee of Justice and Legal Affairs. That mm -hmm. committee was not constituted mm -hmm. because we were not there. That's why they went ahead to create an ad hoc committee. <laughs> Are you getting? I want him to get the difference so that he does not <laughs> uh, misunderstand again. So from our side, we said no. The standing orders are very clear. When you constitute a committee, it must be from both sides of the house. And if the other side of the house has not given its names, then that committee is not complete. And that's why we boycotted that. And they went ahead mm -hmm. to pass the elections law, and it was because of their selfish interests after fearing that the Supreme Court is likely to nullify that election. And of course, we've already seen uh, people have gone to court mm -hmm. for a stay in terms of the, uh, enforcing the, the elections act. We're not part of this. There was this supplementary budget which was brought in. Of course, opposition is supposed to be there to provide the oversight. You hear about the 12 billion. We've had people saying no. 12 billion was not the right amount, supposed to have been 8 billion, whatever the case. So checks and balances in Parliament have to be there, and that's why the committees must be constituted from both sides of the, but both sides line, of the House. But bottom line is, today when Parliament resumes, NASA MPs we are will, going be to be there. will be there. Of course, Despite going to be the there. fact that you say the uh, Parliament was inaugurated by, by uh, a, a president that you... President. Uh, absolutely, that you at that time, because the President, we thought uh, uh, the President should have waited Till there was that determination of the Supreme Court because somebody had gone to court and there was uh, that temporary incumbent which is outlined actually in the Constitution. So from our side, we asked why okay. the premature rush? Okay. Why don't you wait for this to happen? Okay. But as far as parliamentary is pending. concerned, I want it to be very clear for Kenyans to know. We were elected and we were sworn in. Mm -hmm. 
but there's some business that comes on the floor of the house that we are not part of okay. because which 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 is actually a requirement so even going that forward, both sides of the house might absolutely some business. the house business committee as i said earlier which runs the day-to-day -day operations of parliament has not been properly constituted okay so Steve, that must be done. anything to say to this yeah i i, I just see uh, dishonesty in, in terms of the of the <laughs> strategy and here's why uh you do not participate uh in parliamentary matters because the the house committees have not been uh, formed have not been uh, uh sorted you've not provided the names for participants in those uh, committees so that squarely falls on your responsibility and it's part of your strategy to paralyze parliament because if we don't go the house committees cannot be formed and if they're not <coughs> formed then I business cannot go forward so so again it comes back to the same issue if you paralyze parliament and you paralyze business and you say the president is not legitimate and he should wait uh, for for the court to decide before even the action has been taken i think that is uh, disingenuous one of the things that uh, we all hope as a country and as businessmen and as uh, politicians and what have you is that the country carries on so that the rest of us can go on with our businesses and so when you employ these strategies of stopping everything uh, on the basis of your interpretation of what has happened i think you're you're doing a disservice to the country there are many Including options the that are available in terms of uh, strategy <coughs> mm. that you can employ without causing paralysis my suggestion and my recommendation would be go into the house you say that you've participated in some kind of business go into the house and participate in the business of the house if you have something that you you do not agree with let it be noted in the house that you are opposed to it as it used to be done uh, in the past the as opposed to walking out and boycotting the job that you have actually been sent by your people to do okay i uh, think one thing we need to know in terms of the boycott uh, as we wrap up demonstrations this yes. you know it's outlined in the constitution under article 37 that kenyans are, are free to pick it to demonstrate whatever it is and if it's something to do with the business we have the consumer rights okay so and it's a right so for us to have come and told our our, our, our followers that we are not part and parcel of the safaricom as you saw yesterday with Baba, we moved to Airtel from Safaricom. Mm -hmm. It's within our rights. It's the responsibility. I saw the dealers and I had an opportunity mm. to discuss with the dealer. The dealer, when you look at the value supply chain, yours is just to ensure that the products are the doorsteps. So if I told you are seeing a, a big shift from Safaricom to Airtel, then move and go become the distributor for, for Airtel. That's and business blind, continues. That's a blind and, 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 and business continues. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well put, fair enough. I think uh, let's, let's not uh, spread, uh, you know, blind gospel. In the sense that uh, you have told your supporters, NASA supporters, to quit Safaricom products. For instance, M-Pesa dealers. Those who are cleaving out of that. And uh, you tell somebody to quit the kind of business he's doing. Yet you are not telling us the kind of alternative you are giving to that Airtel person. Has. You, Airtel has. It's, those people have invested a lot of money mm -hmm. to have those businesses. Now you tell somebody to go and quit and pay, uh, to close shop and uh, you know shift to another. How, what have you done? How, how practical is that? That's being dishonest. That's being actually uh, dishonest enough to you know mm -hmm. give somebody to for, for, for lacking to give somebody that alternative means of livelihoods. You tell somebody to okay. boycott certain maybe, products, maybe, yet you're okay. not telling them. I, I don't want to dwell too much on this because we are handling it in the first let, hour. Let me, let probably let I give uh, Bonas to Gikoy or something uh, because you're a business to, consultant. Me, me, I will come back to you, okay, the only okay. politician uh, in this. <laughs> uh, with this issue of the, the uh, boycott of some products, what do you have to say to that? I think from my standpoint as a strategist, I think it's a, it's a clever way of uh, trying to uh, extort reaction uh, from the businesses. But I think uh, the simplicity with which uh, Honorable Omalo says that go and join Airtel uh, speaks of a, of a lack of understanding in terms of how businesses run. It is akin to asking him to quit his position as MP and, and go, go become a uh, cash cash position as an MCA. Mm. You know, it is not that simple. I'm sure you you uh, I'm, a <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you 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 campaigned, spent money, uh, sold uh, yourself to people, and then someone tells you just go over. It's not that simple. Now, uh, to, to run a business <laughs> is a very complex matter. You have to consider uh, uh, your, your customers, you have to consider how you get your product to them, you have to market, and you have to compete with others and put all the infrastructure. When you go and without cause, or, or uh, as far as we know, 
and you decide that this business is not good because for whatever reason it does not support our political standing and uh, most of these businesses are apolitical anyway uh, then you know it throws the country uh, for a loop basically you're putting us in a cycle that we do not want to be in consider safaricom is not a standalone organization or bitco for that matter there are numerous people small small businesses that supply them with uh, with uh, services so when you affect their bottom line you affect every other Kenyan down the road, including your own constituents. Yes, I think uh, I want my brother to understand that I'm an international consultant on strategy. <laughs> I'm not just a lawmaker. Maybe he did. I hope you may, 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 maybe, maybe he didn't know. Uh, and I've know. also been uh, a lecturer at the university teaching strategy. Maybe I've been my student, you know? <laughs> I want you to take note of that. I'm not, I'm not just. Okay. Uh, I want you to I'm not just. Uh, I'm not just a lawmaker. <laughs> yes. Now, in terms of decision making, any decision you make, there's an opportunity cost. Even for you to decide to have come here, it's an opportunity cost you incur. It is true. So there's no decision you'll come and say that you are making this decision, and uh, it's not going to have any risk. And what I want to tell you is, when we tell our supporters to move, or resist, we are not putting a gunpoint at you. Every decision is an opportunity cost. And because our members believe in the bigger picture, they are ready to incur that opportunity cost for the sake of the desired change. So in terms of strategy or any decision you make, an opportunity cost is there. But you need to assess it. Okay. Absolutely. Gentlemen, and that is the model using strategy. Our time is almost up. We need to make our final submissions. But uh, on, I think we've handled that matter of the boycott uh, for Parliament and for some products. Uh, let's now take a look at the final headline. It has to do uh, with the by-election in Kitutu Chachi. It has caused quite some ruckus. Mm -hmm. uh, or the ODM leader, <coughs> uh, NASA leader, uh, Raila Odinga, actually appearing to support the Ford Kenya candidate. Mm -hmm. Yet there's an ODM candidate there in the race as well. Seven candidates in total uh, taking part in the Kitutu Chache uh, constituency by-election today. That uh, <coughs> by-election was caused uh, following the death of one of the candidates just before the <coughs> 8th <coughs> process. So that constituency is one of those that did not have an election. That election is being carried out today. Uh, we have a Ford Kenya member here. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a candidate there. Uh, Richard Onyonka is your candidate. ODM has a candidate as well. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what does he say about Even coalition politics? Yes. Yeah. What does he say about coalition politics, uh, Brian? Uh, <laughs> First of all, coalition coalitions are very hard to manage, unlike uh, political parties, which are you know uh, guided by same principles and the same rules of engagement. So coalitions become a little bit hectic, especially putting them in order. And this is the same same situation that we saw in Mombasa uh, after the outcry from one Hassan Omar, who actually claimed that uh, you know he was a Wiper candidate, but mm -hmm. he was not receiving the support, the same support from his party leader Kalonzo Musyoka. And the Kalonzo was actually being seen to be supporting or being uh, inclined towards Joho candidature. And therefore, this is not hard, this is not a new game uh, as far as uh, party affiliation is concerned. It boils down to the to the nature and the weight of that candidate, so to speak. And therefore, if NASA felt that, uh, you know, Onyonka was more, you know, sellable candidate, I think uh, if it's a, it's a decision that was made in a boardroom and, uh, you know, all together, they reasoned together and they felt this is the way to go. Let's give our support to one candidate, but well and good. Because those are small other, part, uh, sm uh, other candidates from other parties, of course, they will come out guns blazing, saying that, saying that they are lacking that support from their respective party leaders etc etc especially for the kenya for ford and the wiper but that again has to be a situation where it has to be guided by that kind of consensus from the party leadership if they do they did agree that this is what the approach we are going to take well and good but the problem is if uh, there was no consultation among the top party brass if they did not sit down and say that they are you know supporting uh, one candidate only that or Raila actually came out alone and decided to support Onyonga in, as a person in his own capacity as ODM leader then that is a problem and it shows some cracks within the NASA coalition it shows a coalition which is not talking to each other and it shows those yes. disgruntlement within the party uh, not something to 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 but to roll also out. Steve for one Samuel Omar Mwando, who's an ODM candidate there, mm -hmm. he already has a party certificate to run for that uh, seat. He has already paid the party a certain mm -hmm. fee yes. to be able to get that certificate. Mm -hmm. Then the party leader goes ahead and endorses a different candidate from a different party. Mm -hmm. Surely, this uh, should be a matter even to be taken somewhere because
because he <laughs> need uh, he needs some uh, uh, form of legal redress. So Why make me go through this process? Yeah. Then, as a party, decide to uh, uh, put your weight behind someone else. Let me tell you, going through a campaign and then losing at the nomination can be most hurtful. But a greater disappointment comes when the party leader points in a different direction, as in this case. Uh, the man must be having major headaches. And also, NASA needs to, to address those issues because we saw what happened during the, the nominations where candidates were given mm -hmm. uh, certificates. There might be, as uh, Mutai is saying, there might be a reason for giving this other candidate. But when Raila Odinga points in a different direction, uh, you're dead in the water. Uh, so, so basically, it's, it's hard knocks for, for this individual. Uh, so that's something he'll have to deal with and assess his uh, party affiliation as a result of that. Uh, but truly, I don't think there's a recourse outside of the NASA uh, yes, fraternity yes. that he can go to court and say, you know. And uh, because the by-election is today, we don't want to delve too much into uh, the candidates and the processes. But uh, going forward, uh, such issues could have an impact on NASA as a coalition. Uh, the fact that quite a number of candidates have uh, complained that their parties have not been clear in as far as support is concerned. One party leader supports a uh, candidate from a different party, uh, as opposed to Jubilee, which is just one party, and it's clear. Once you're a Jubilee candidate, uh, the support is one way. Uh, don't you think this will present a problem for NASA going forward? Uh, I think, uh, uh, f first and foremost, uh, I want you to, to know that I've just come from Kisi. I've been there campaigning for the for the entire week. I just came in uh, yesterday night, and from the look of things, I have no doubt uh, that the people of Kitutu Chaje are going to vote for Richard Onyonga. It is, it is, it is uh, election day. Uh, 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 we are not allowed to campaign Richard for Richard Onyonga uh, by landslide. <laughs> we, and, we are not allowed to. And, uh, Sorry for and that. coming to coalitions, of course, Jubilee is a political party. Mm. And uh, NASA is a coalition, coalition of parties. Under the coalition of parties, we have different political parties which have some competing interests. So for, for, for us, our strategy here, you know, Jubilee has taken advantage of NASA forwarding many candidates, you know, so that it can pass uh, through. And there's a way of uh, emerging strategy, which uh, Professor Mitzelberg, I think, who came up with the emerging strategy. If you look at the way things have been, we looked at, we assessed the situation at hand, and we realized uh, Raida Molodinga, his interest is for a NASA candidate to win. Whether it's ODM, for the Kenya, WIPA, ANC. The locals themselves did their own analysis and realized who is going to win this seat. And after the analysis, they've done the analysis, they realize if all the efforts can be towards Richard Onyonga, He's the one likely to retain that seat as opposed to I will have to stop you there. I will have to stop there because you insist on yeah, campaigning absolutely. for one of the candidates. It is uh, election day. Yeah. It is election day. It is unfair to campaign for is, anyone yeah, right now. It is actually against uh, mm. the electoral laws. Exactly. Yes. Uh, so, gentlemen, let me give you a chance to give your final submissions about 30 seconds each as we wrap up. Thank you, Fred. And I think I would want to just go uh, take the debate a note uh, uh, further. Uh, in the sense that uh, we have seen us uh, using proxies actually going to the courts. Uh, that's my assumption. And uh, of course, we are expecting that ruling to come within 14 days. Uh, but in the event that NASA does not actually have their day in the office, I think they still have an avenue to explore through the Constitution and the Article 159, which actually gives them the opportunity to mediate, negotiate, and be part of the politically brokered process if they have to participate in government business day to day. And therefore, that brokered, politically brokered process, which is actually guided by the wisdoms of negotiation and mediation, can, all, can be the only key that will ensure sure that NASA participates in the government, the incoming government. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bona Chris Malo. Mm, I want to, my brother to know that when you go to court, there's nothing like proxy. <laughs> what the judges are supposed to do to make their judgment based on evidence that is part and parcel of the court. So I want to educate him I on that so the, that he knows. In the event. And, uh, and uh, one thing we want to say is uh, we go as per what uh, Justice Maraga said. You know, uh, the greatness of a nation, its fidelity to the constitution, and strict adherence to the rule of law. When this matter comes before the Supreme Court, which we have a lot of respect for, we want them to look at it objectively and move to the speed and give a determination within the stipulated 14 days. Mm -hmm. And this will be based on the law. And 
my 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 opinion is in case the jubilee side or whoever their lawyers come in and try to bring in this elections act the way it was uh, enacted recently i think the honorable thing they should do they should just reject this but let's go back and use the laws that were existing as per the way the election was okay. and let's tell kenyans what transpired i have no doubt they're going to nullify uh, these elections but lastly allow me to to send a message of uh, condolence i've just received a message mm, so you know the former chief justice uh, sarkas chesoni comes from my constituency and uh, i've just learned that uh, we've lost the the widow and i want to take this opportunity to send my message of condolences to the late justice uh, jesoni's uh, family and uh, we pray to god to give them strength and comfort at this particular difficult time. And lastly, as we get back to Parliament, I want to tell my Jubilee colleagues that uh, we want to have a bipartisan approach and we are telling them we must learn. I want to borrow, you know, at, there was a time I used this word and somebody told me I was threatening and I'm borrowing these words from um, one of the uh, celebrated uh, leaders of the civil society from America and this is uh, Martin Luther King Jr. He say that uh, we must learn to live together as brothers or we perish, perish together, together as fools. As fools. Okay. I thank you. Steve, get going. A nice way to end that. Um, <laughs> however, I, I think that as Kenyans, we have been most patient uh, with the political fraternity uh, and the ongoing tussle uh, for power. I think uh, it's going to be very important uh, not to block our roads and not to destabilize business, <coughs> and also not to cause this turbulence that we are experiencing with burning of homes and the general insecurity that this agitation is, uh, is causing. Uh, you have spoken very well. You have uh, uh, spoken about God, and you spoke about Martin Luther King, who was a minister. Uh, I think we should employ your, your ability to strategize and go and appeal to our brothers in NASA to stop destabilizing the country in this process. There okay. are numerous ways that uh, you can get to, <coughs> to where you're going uh, without necessarily uh, killing the cow, if you will. Mm -hmm. Steve Gikonyo, political strategist, business consultant, uh, Brian Mutie, uh, also a governance expert, and Chris Omalo, MP Kiminini, helping us look at the headlines this morning. Well, Pub Breakfast still continues, and remember that's a hashtag to use up until 9 a.m. Uh, Joey Muthengi coming up with another interview. After that, Willis Waburu with some entertainment news. My name is Freddie Dumuli. Good morning.